After a series of strong first party releases, the Wii U has kind of stagnated. Smash Brothers happened with lots of great and shocking DLC. Same thing with Mario Kart. Link turned up. Cloud turned up in the other one. We had the usual less groundbreaking than Galaxy but still systematically impressive Mario game. Donkey Kong Country returned. Again, we had Not Yoshi's Island. They can't make another one of those apparently. A Dynasty Warriors clone. And Pokemon Tekken has just hit the shelves. In all honesty, it's been a really, really weird period for Nintendo and an even weirder time to be a Nintendo fan. Now I haven't played my Wii U in months. At the moment it's collecting dust, and to be honest, between me and you, the only reason I'm keeping it around is on the off chance that one day it becomes a collectible because it sold so badly. It's been a long day without you, my friend. And I'll tell you all about it when I see you again. But ladies and gentlemen, the time is upon us. Dust off your Wii U's. Nintendo has finally produced a new game for the console that has spent the majority of 2016 unplayed, unloved, and unappreciated. And no, I'm not talking about this shit. is Star Fox Zero. Ignoring the lackluster E3 footage we were bestowed, it's had a revamp, it's coming out. The Wii U is, the, the Wii U has a game. Sorry I got tongue tied there, it, it really is that much of a shock. It looks like a lot of fun and hopefully it's a return of form to the series, I have my fingers crossed. But that's not what I'm here to talk about today. Now. To be completely honest, I don't really give a shit about Star Fox Zero. You see, I don't know if you've noticed, uh, I've got a bit of my own style going on. I'm not like the rest of those YouTubers you probably see around here, but I'm a little bit different. I'm what you'd call original, unique. I am a retro gamer. And to be honest, we're not going to be playing Star Fox Zero today, we're going to be playing... We're going to be playing this. We're going to be playing this. On the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. Now this is my first time probably playing Star Wing, but I've always been familiar with it. In fact, I have fond memories watching a friend play it at his house in my youth. Ah, youth. Before the crippling debt of my student loan and the constant string of miserable occurrences, I remember Star Wing with its amazing 3D graphics, cutting edge fast gameplay, which simply can't be matched today. It simply couldn't be matched. So let's do this. The frame rate, the graphics, could it be that my nostalgic childhood memories have deceived me? Good luck! Now introductions aside, Star Fox has always been a popular first party franchise for Nintendo, and this game is the reason for it. Growing up I'd say I was more familiar with Lilac Wars and the Nintendo 64 than I ever was Star Wing, 
but it wasn't until I got a bit older that I noticed the differences in the game names between regions. Funnily enough, it isn't one of those nonsensical name changes either. Over here, the Ninja Turtles became Hero Turtles, Bully became Canis Canem Edit, and Boris Johnson became Mayor. That last one's not related to name changes, but it's equally nonsensical. Star Fox's name change was actually due to another European company in existence at the time. Star Fox was renamed Star Wing due to an organisation known as Star Vox existing at the time in Germany, and Nintendo didn't want to cause confusion. When have they ever done that? Nevertheless, the game handles the same, regardless of the name, and led by the leading cutting-edge Super FX chip, Star Wing was a breakthrough in home 3D gaming, despite the graphics now looking worse than the average piece of shit shovelware you'd find on your iPhone. Through actually spending a fair bit of time with the game again, it's actually quite amazing to see how the game holds up in areas. Instantly, the presentation of the game does get you in the mood for space battles and racking up those high scores. Straight away, characters are introduced through witty dialogue and actually appear alongside you in the gameplay itself. Looking out for your team members in the field of battle not only adds variety and a high score bonus, but it also adds a sense of camaraderie with the rest of the Star Fox team. You can feel how much of an idiot Slippy is when he calls for your help. You can tell how much of an arrogant douche Falco is when he insults you for destroying a ship he was allegedly about to shoot down. There's a little bit of polish within the gameplay itself that just helps to immerse you a little. Though to be honest, they do all look and sound like absolute morons. The game handles as an on-rail shooter with pretty precise controls and fast-paced gameplay. There are three pathways with differing difficulties you can choose from at the start of the game, which adds a bit of replay value and does help spice things up a little for when you eventually hit the game over screen. It's worth noting that the hard path feels unbeatable. The game can be quite frustrating based on current day game and it can be a bit of a shock to the system to not have the game hold your hand so much. I've died a countless amount of times purely because I've been unable to understand what is actually going on. The frame rate of the game is so slow by today's standards and the polygon style 3D graphics can be especially confusing on certain levels. The biggest issue I'd say is the lack of a crosshair for your shooting. This was addressed and added in Star Fox 64, but accurate shooting can be a bit tricky when you start out. A crosshair is only accessible from the cockpit camera angle, but this forces you to prioritise shooting over steering. Both of these are equally important. Strangely enough, Nintendo worked on plenty of these issues in the game's planned sequel. They added a crosshair so you could actually see what you were shooting, the graphics and frame rate were improved, and from what I've seen, the gameplay is much better for it. But of course by now it's becoming common knowledge that the sequel was never released. In fact, a couple of features are on their way back into the series with Star Fox Zero. The reason it wasn't released? Shigeru Miyamoto wanted to have a clean break between 3D games on the SNES and 3D games on the new superior Nintendo 64 system. They didn't want there to be any confusion about what system could do which. When have they ever done that? I'm not good at this game, and I can't even pretend to be. In fact, I'm awful at it. The game is a bit of a relic, but I can't deny that it's fun. The game has charm like no other, the boss fights are cool, the game is challenging, the soundtrack is awesome, the characters are memorable, and that's all you really need. But I don't think by the same token that you need to play this game either. For example, take The Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past. In my opinion, this game defines the Zelda franchise. If you're a huge fan of the series, you're likely to have played it and understand that it really did set the standard for what a great Zelda game could be. If you haven't played it, but know the series and want to go back and try it for the first time now, it's very likely that you're going to enjoy it. The game is timeless. It looks great, plays great and is great. 
I really like it. I don't really think this applies to Starwing. It's been preceded by much better games which establish what the series could be, whether they were released or not. If you want to check it out, you'll have fun with it for a while, you'll eventually get a headache, then play Lilac Wars. And honestly that's not really a bad decision. Lilac Wars really didn't add much gameplay wise. It did add bits, I'm not claiming it didn't, but it didn't add new features from Star Fox 2. It instead gave a new coat of paint to a game that desperately needed it. Starwing is a game that broke boundaries and showed what a little plastic console could accomplish, and it was a blueprint of what a great Star Fox game could be. So there we have it, that's my opinion. I'm not claiming to be an absolute master on the topic, I've done a little bit of my research, but I know I'm not the master of Star Fox. Hey, if you disagree with any of the comments I've made, just drop a comment yourself underneath this video and I'd be happy to discuss it. But you know what? Thinking about it, you're watching this video on my channel, so instantly that means my opinion has more weight than yours. Your opinion is null and void. This is Mark's revolution. I don't care about your opinion. Please like and subscribe. Peace out. One love. Marks. Revolution.